Hey Internet, it's RJ. Welcome back. Thanks for tuning into the show today. Now today is Sunday, so you know what that means. It's time to go around the net with all the news you can use in the week that was in credit and finance. So on the docket for today, we have an update to that Barclays story we told you about last week. We have a class action lawsuit against some of the major banks and a potential way you could be a part of it to get some of this payout. We have two stories about American Express and Platinum Card expanding lounges by partnering with other networks. And then stay tuned to the end because we have a shameless plug here about the return of credit card madness tournament to the channel now that doesn't make any sense definitely stay tuned you won't even have to buy anything for this shameless plug i promise so if that sounds interesting to you then go ahead press the subscribe button and let's get to work now, first things first, let's bat lead off with Barclays. So I'll link to the full show from last week we did on Sunday. Well, but the thing is Barclays, the Cliff Notes version anyways, is Barclays was reporting some business cards to personal credit, which normally shouldn't happen. The vast majority of issuers do not report business cards to personal credit, which is different than pulling personal credit to approve you. They will pull it, but they don't report it as an account to your personal credit. Well, this looked like it was happening specifically with like the business Wyndham card, which of course is like one of the good cards people would actually want from Barclays. Well, anyways, the folks who were giving us the data points, I'm talking about a handful of people um, who were saying this was reported to um, personal credit, are now saying this has since been removed. If so, if you go in and you check your personal credit, um, that line item for a business Wyndham car should be removed. Um, now, again, we don't really know how widespread it is because the vast majority of people aren't going to do this. Honestly, aren't even going to think about this. It's not even necessarily a bad thing unless you're playing this game really hard and you want to use business cards as a way to get around Chase 524 and you just don't want you know, to burn a hard inquiry with them. But aside from that, it's not necessarily that big of a deal. So it looks like Barclays just messed up. And to that point of the size of people affected, I wouldn't expect to see anything like public statement from Barclays. I haven't seen anything. This is just from Dr. Credit Updates. So we did have a few folks down below who were affected. So if that is you, you might want to just double check, see if it's been removed. And if not, it's probably worth phoning up to Barclays, seeing if you can get that taken a look at. So there's our update for Barclays. With that, we now turn to a class action lawsuit going on in the world of credit and finance. And this is against some of the major players in the industry. So let's take a look at this. So here we have it, what we're calling an ATM class action lawsuit. So who specifically? Chase, Wells Fargo, and Bank of America. What specifically? This lawsuit claims the banks broke federal antitrust laws by using restraints that resulted in inflated ATM surcharge fees. Now, the eligibility here to be a part of this or be, have your claim included starts from October 1st of 2007 and goes all the way through November 12th of 2021. If you paid a surcharge directly to Chase, Wells Fargo, or Bank of America to withdraw cash from a bank ATM in the U.S., then you would count. Now, the amount here, the settlement amount is $67 million. However, that doesn't necessarily mean there's a set amount yet for individuals. I haven't seen a figure yet. Now, that's largely going to probably depend on who, act, how many people they actually get to be a part of this. Now, you must submit your claim by May 11th of 2022 um, to be a part of this. So overall, I will link down below to the site where you need to go to be a part of this. So what generally happens here, you know, man, these companies, it's not just in banking, but these companies settle and then, you know, there's a large amount of money. But, you know, you still, the attorneys have to get their piece. And what, especially with this, when there's such a wide timeline, you know, long runway from 07 to 21. One, there's a lot of people who could have been affected by this. So what's unfortunately likely going to happen is a lot of people will be included in this, and then the money, the payout's not going to be that substantial, unfortunately. Now, if you remember back to like the Equifax um, one, we, we talked about that, I think, a week or two ago here where, you know, Equifax, they were paying out, it was like $125 a person, but like once that money ran out, it kind of ran out, and then they would just strongly encourage you to use the, go for the free credit monitoring option, or I don't know, I don't know what happened if you didn't do either of those, I guess you just got nothing. I think I went for the free credit monitoring option. Um, so again, I'll link it down below, you know, I think if you were a part of this, if you were affected, then, you know, might as well join up, you know, if nothing else just because you're owed that money and they were taking advantage of people and that shouldn't happen so you know why not but again i wouldn't have my hopes up to get like a ton of money from this um but anyways with that aside we move on to some lighter news we go on to our two american express stories so if you are a fan of the platinum card and airport lounges well then you are in luck because amex is partnering with another company virgin atlantic to expand their their airport lounge access so let's take a look at this 
So here we have it, Amex Plus version Atlantic. So again, this is going to be platinum and business platinum card holders. That does cover all flavors of the platinum card. I would assume Centurion is also in here. Now, you now have access to more version clubhouses. That's a version Atlantic's basically their airport lounge. So I believe you've already always had access to the one in JFK, but these the rest of these are new. So if you're going abroad, you can get in in South Africa. Again, New York and JFK. We have Newark, San Francisco, SFO, Washington, D.C., which is IAD, and then Boston. But Boston's just temporarily closed. So some additional details on these lounges if you're interested. On the left, you have the lounge, you have the hours, and then you have the location as well. Now at the bottom here, we also have the entry requirement. So it's nothing crazy. You should be familiar with it. You're going to need your Amex card. You're going to need a confirmed boarding pass for same-day travel. Um, a government issued ID. And then as far as guests go, you can also bring one guest plus children under two can enter free of charge. However, there is a caveat here that guest policy is changing for these in 2023. So just something to be aware of. Now, overall, my understanding is that Virgin Clubhouses are pretty nice lounges. I could have sworn we had a story a while ago where, where they let um, platinum card holders in in like the New York lounge, but it was for like a weird time, it's a very specific time. I think early in the morning um, to like maybe mid-morning max. So this looks like an expansion of it and looks like these hours are going to be normal, which is helpful because again, we all know the lounges are pretty crowded. So anytime you get access to a bigger network, especially in these bigger airports that likely have multiples, you know, they have, I know like JFK, Centurion, I think they have Sky Club and now they have this. So that definitely helps. But if you don't go to bigger airports, well, don't worry, you're in luck because there's also something that I was not aware of called Centurion Studios that are basically like baby um, Centurion lounges in smaller airports. So let's take a look at this. So here we have it, Centurion Studio. So this is an American Express plus Escape Lounge partnership. So this is kind of built as a smaller spaces with quality food and beverage. So currently there are 12 studios and 10 smaller airports. So you have Hartford, Connecticut, Minneapolis, which is not a small airport in Minneapolis. Um, Phoenix, Reno, Cincinnati, Oakland, Sacramento, Greenville, Spartanburg, West Palm Beach, Providence, and then Fort Lauderdale is the one that's coming soon. Now, access, you can get in with a Platinum or a Centurion card. Again, that should be all flavors of Platinum. However, it's a little bit less exclusive because you could also pay $45 at the door or $40 in advance online for a day pass. So, again, the, the news there is that Fort Lauderdale is opening, but I'll be honest with you, I did not know they had these smaller baby Centurion lounges um, before. I've never actually been to one. I don't think I've seen one, but I don't know if I've been to any of these smaller airports either. Now, again, it's partnered with Escape Lounges who run, you know, their own lounges, so it's not super surprising that you can get in, you know, for paying money. Um, I don't know. I, you would think the Priority Pass might get you in, but I don't know if Escape is a part of the Priority Pass network. So, if you've been to one of these and you've seen it, let me, definitely let me know. I'm interested what a smaller baby centurion lounge looks like but with that we now move to the shameless plug of the show so you know if you're new here um you might not remember but about a year ago in march the, the channel ran the first ever what i'm calling the first ever credit card madness tournament this basically pitted 16 of the finest credit cards in the world against one another in a single elimination winner-take-all battle decided by you, the viewers at home. We just basically get votes in through Google Forms, and then, you know, the winners would move on. Very simple. Um, last year, the Platinum card reigned supreme. It was actually a drag out street fight between the Wells Fargo Propel and the Amex Platinum card. Platinum card won just a little bit, but that was the old Platinum card on the $550 annual fee. So, long story short, the tournament is coming back. We play it every March. Well, this is technically be the second time we're going to play but we're going to play it every march it's a lot of fun it's kind of just a break something different to do you know i think we're like-minded people can have fun playing a little bit of game for the month of march and you know the first quarter is generally slow anyways with news and updates and things so it's a perfect time to play it it's definitely a spin or a parry on the march madness from the ncaa tournament so look i say all this to say hey um be aware of it monday is when we are going to talk about it i will have a full video announcing it i've definitely retooled it so if you missed out last time, if you weren't a subscriber then, you are now or you want to be, go ahead, take care of that. Again, full details come Monday. It should be a lot of fun. So tell your friends, get excited for it because it's going to be back and we're going to see if uh, the Platinum card can defend its title again, even at this inflated $700 price tag, or does it get dethroned by a newcomer? Do we have a wild card? We never really know. And the great thing is actually up to you, although I do vote as well, but only one time. So anyways, guys, that's been our news plus the shameless plug. If you like this one, drop me a thumbs up down 
down below. If you're not particularly interested or if you're just hyped for the tournament, consider subscribing to the channel. Again, posting content just like this every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Of course, right back here every Sunday with all the news you can use in the week that wasn't credit and finance. My question for you guys is let me know what news stories you've seen below as well as your thoughts on the Centurion Studios. Am I the only one who didn't know this was a thing? That would probably make me not good at my job. I feel like I should probably know these things. But anyways, let me know what you've got going on, what you've been seeing, or let me know what you think about the credit card tournament. Who do you think is going to win? Again, tune in Monday for that. But anyways, guys, that's going to do it for this one. As always, thank you so much for watching. I'll talk to you on Monday.